This lesson deals with a second order bandpass filter. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting at page 33. Suppose that we further rearrange our series RLC to find the voltage across the resistor. So let's solve for the transfer function V out over V in and take a look at what that looks like versus frequency. V out is just a voltage divider with V in, so it's going to be R over SL plus 1 over SC plus R times V in. So we'll bring the V in over here, and we've got our transfer function. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by SC. I'll get SRC in the numerator, S squared LC. I'll get a 1, and I'll get an SRC. Tell us further, let's pull out an LC from the denominator, and then divide it into the numerator. So we'll get the C's canceling, and I'll just have R over L times S, then divided by just S squared, and then SRC divided by LC just gives me R over L, and then 1 over LC. This too turns out to be a standard form as a combination of our other eight forms to create what's called a bandpass filter. The denominator will be the same as our previous filters, S squared plus omega naught over Q naught S plus omega naught squared. But if we factor the numerator such that the constant that we have is equal to H naught omega naught over Q naught times S, then that can be interpreted in terms of its Bode plots. Let's solve for the three constants. Omega naught squared is just this term, so it's gonna be the square root of one over LC. The term H naught is embedded in this numerator term, the totality of which is R over L. Take this term here, which is H naught omega naught over Q naught, if we multiply it by the reciprocal of this term, in other words, Q naught over omega naught, these terms cancel and we just get H naught. This term here is just the R over L, and then from the denominator, omega naught over Q naught is also R over L, so then the reciprocal of that would be L over R. We wind up just getting one. So the value of H naught again for this circuit is equal to one. The value of Q naught will turn out to be the same as we had in our two previous filters because the denominator is the same. Now let's sketch the Bode plot of the general form and see how that relates to our specific circuit. Plug in S equals J omega, so our numerator then is H naught omega naught over Q naught times J omega, and J omega squared is going to be minus omega squared, and then we have J omega times omega naught over Q naught, and then omega naught squared. Got to make this look like our combinations of our eight forms. Let's pull out the term H naught omega naught over Q naught, I'm just left with J omega. I got to make this equal to a 1 to be my form 8, so let's pull out an omega naught squared, left with 1, and then the quantity minus omega over omega naught squared. I have J omega times omega naught divided by omega naught squared. One of those cancels, and so I get j omega over omega naught q naught. Cancellation with one of these terms. I have a constant in front, h naught omega naught over q naught. That's our form one. j omega is a form two. And then the denominator reciprocal was our form eight. Let's sketch the three forms. The first one's a constant, so 20 log of h naught divided by omega naught q naught would just be a straight line versus frequency. Normally, omega naught and q naught are pretty large numbers, so I'll show this as a number that's negative in dB, where 0 dB is over here. But it could actually be positive, you get the same results. Next term is just j omega, which passes through 1 radian per second with a slope of 20 dB per decade. For the form 8, all we need to do is find omega naught, and we're going to drop at 40 dB per decade. In other words, a slope of minus 40 dB per decade. Let's find the regions where the slopes are constant, that would be to the left and to the right of omega naught. The first term has got a constant slope of 0 dB per decade plus 20, and then 0 dB per decade. So the net sum is 20 dB per decade. I picked 1 radian per second to add up the results because two of the three forms are 0 at that point. So here's my summation of 0 plus 0 plus this term. And we're going to increase at 20 dB per decade until we get to omega naught. And then our net slope then is plus 20 minus 40. So then we're going to have a net slope of minus 20 dB per decade. Let's sketch the actual curve as hugging the asymptotes above and below omega naught. And watch it be above the asymptotes when Q naught's greater than 1. Now let's find the point where the two asymptotes cross for magnitude, and likewise the peak of the curve. I'll call it x and y. We could use our slopes to find where the two asymptotes cross. Call this the point x2 and call this the point x1. The difference of these two points, in this case, is x minus this term divided by the log of omega naught divided by 1. We can now then solve for x cross multiply, so then I have 20 log base 10 of omega naught, and then bring this term on the other side of the equation as 20 log base 10 of h naught over omega naught q naught. Let me write this as the difference of two terms, so it'll be 20 log base 10 of h naught over q naught, and then plus 20 log base 10 of 1 over omega naught. You can also write that as omega naught to the minus 1 power, so I get a minus 20 log base 10 of omega naught. But these two terms cancel. Two asymptotes cross at omega naught, and the value of the gain at that point is h naught over q naught in dB. Now what about the term y? Find the gain of the actual curve at omega naught. So let's go back to our equation on the last page. We had 
H naught omega naught over Q naught. Then we had J omega, but now omega equals omega naught. And then we had the term one minus omega over omega naught squared. But when that's equal to a one ratio, I get one minus one. And then I have J omega, which is now omega naught over omega naught Q naught. And I get a lot of term cancellations. This cancels with this. This cancels with this. The J's cancel and the Q naughts cancel. And I'm just left with H naught. The actual curve has a gain of 20 log base 10 of H naught at omega equals omega naught. Now in our circuit, H naught was equal to one, which would then be zero dB. Now from this Bode plot, when omega is much, much less than omega naught, we have a slope of 20 dB per decade. So as the frequency is, we're becoming more and more negative in dB. So it's approaching a gain of zero. When omega is much, much greater than omega naught, we have a slope of minus 20 dB per decade. And the same thing's happening as frequency is increasing, we're becoming more and more negative which again is approaching zero. And lastly, at omega equals omega naught, the gain is equal to H naught, which is equal to one. What's happening in our circuit, a small band of frequencies are allowed to pass through the circuit with a gain either equal to one or nearly equal to one. And for frequencies much higher and much lower than omega naught, the value of the gain is getting smaller and smaller. So we're blocking those signals, really reducing their size. Passing a band of frequencies, I'm gonna call this a band pass filter. Now the same argument you can also do right on the schematic. So let's go back to the previous page and do the same thing. So when the frequency is low enough compared to omega naught, as the frequency gets lower and lower, this looks more and more like a short circuit, and this looks like an open circuit. The current that's flowing in here then is gonna be very small, and so the output voltage is gonna be shrinking. You actually predict the slope, because you have a series circuit, although this is not a short, this is not an open, but a very low impedance and a very high impedance, so most of Vn is across the capacitor. The current that flows then is Vn divided by one over Sc or times Sc, so multiply that current times the resistance and you get the output voltage. Slope is 20 dB per decade as the frequency is decreasing. We do the other extreme, being much greater than omega naught. The opposite happens. We wind up having, as the frequency increases, the inductor looks more and more like an open circuit and the capacitor like a short circuit. And most of Vn would be across the L. Current that flows then is Vn divided by SL. And we'll multiply that by R to get the voltage out. Slope is a minus 20 dB per decade. And lastly, let's take a look at what happens at omega naught. If you recall from chapter eight, for a series RLC circuit, the resonant frequency was one over the square root of LC, just like it is now. And the impedance of the inductor is actually exactly the same as the impedance of the capacitor, but the opposite sign. A series combination is a short circuit. Output equals the input at omega equals omega naught equals one over the square root of LC the gain is equal to one. These are the things that we actually predicted with the calculations of our transfer function and then looking at extreme frequencies of just this equation. So the circuit, the transfer function, and the body plot are really telling you the same thing, but in a different form. And these are some of the properties of a second order bandpass filter with complex conjugate roots.